Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, my name is John Needham. As usual, I'll be your host for the day. Um, and I trust everyone can um, hear me well. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, happy Thanksgiving uh, to all of our um, American clients. And uh, yes, David, hello. Are you hearing me all right there, David? Uh, Sage, what about you? you? You let me know how the volume is and what have you, Terry. Uh, no, we haven't got our usual um, supporters here. Great, okay, thank you. Thanks to Unshift, my mate. Good on you, Ship. Lovely to see you here. Um, so, folks, our American friends have got a nice uh, a holiday weekend coming up, and it's uh, Thanksgiving, which is a huge, huge uh, deal in America. Um, and for us... Um, we get a holiday as well, although we don't uh, we don't get the uh, turkey and the trimmings and everything else uh, shift, but uh, we get a nice long weekend, and it's uh, always welcome. One of the things about trading, as you all know, is it's very intense, um, and uh, you know, any time we get a uh, chance of a holiday, uh, grab it with both hands. So, well, particularly a decent holiday like this, remember that uh, there'll be no signals for Monday because we need the charts to reset after a market holiday, so the next lot of uh, signals for Genie and uh, GMAG and TO3 and Plus uh, will be next Tuesday, folks, so uh, make sure you uh, close out your trades or uh, at the very least make sure your stops are uh, good till cancelled, um, and uh, best thing is uh, switch off your computers uh, and really enjoy the break, uh, cherish the time with your family and uh, You'll come back refreshed, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty wild from uh, next week into the end of the year. Uh, some promising signs of uh, decent volatility going to build up, so uh, uh, I do wish you on behalf of uh, Terry and myself um, and uh, all the uh, people who help us at the Daniel Code, we do wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving, um, and to our southern friends, Shift and Co., and uh, we hope you have a wonderful uh, and enjoyable weekend. Okay. Um, let's have a look what's happening here as we uh, move along. What I'm showing you now is our uh, compliance document, uh, which I show you every time uh, that we do a uh, uh, webinar, and uh, you do need to pay attention to this uh, stuff. Uh, trading involves risk. Uh, past performance is no guarantee of future performance, um, and uh, when we're talking about market performance, much of the stuff that we're showing you or uh, creating for you is hypothetical, that it's uh, created by a computer program, uh, which doesn't take into account all the vagaries of the market. Uh, so uh, anything uh, you'd like to do with the Daniel Code that you see here, uh, if you'd like to learn about this stuff and trade it, uh, we have a very simple policy on marketing. We don't do any. Uh, what we simply say is that you're most welcome to have a look at any of the products that we offer. <laughs> And have a free trial to them, and uh, you decide for yourself whether it's uh, going to be suitable for you. Uh, so what you need to do is uh, click the register button at the Daniel Code website, uh, choose a username and password, uh, and uh, Terry will uh, you can contact Terry at uh, support at the Daniel Code dot com. He'll switch on uh, all of the markets for you to trial. Um, interesting uh, Friday here that uh, for those of you. Uh, particularly who are uh, new to us. Um, we had a nice uh, post from Brian C., who's an English gentleman. Um, he's a uh, new member, um, and he's been uh, diligently attending the um, uh, webinars that we do. Let me see if Brian's here. Uh, he probably is. He doesn't miss many. Uh, nice to see so many friends here. Got a good roll up today. Thank you, folks. Uh, Gosh, we've got a lot of people too. Um, fortunately, um, they list it alphabetically, so if Brian is here, he should be under the Bs. Uh, and I'm not sure if he's here, because probably 2 o'clock in the morning in England. Uh, anyway, uh, he's an, is a new member, and um, he's just been following the webinars, and as you can see from his post here, which he put up, uh, after the close of tra trading on Friday, he uh, he said that um, he's uh, got the message, the lights have gone on, 
um, and he had an amazing day, 11 out of 10. Um, and uh, I love to hear that stuff. Uh, I usually hear from people when things aren't going so well, but not enough of your posts when things are going well, which they do most of the time. Um, and you can see my response to him, which is uh, the top half of the page, and I uh, referred him to the story about the uh, it's a childhood story about the little tale of Baghdad, uh, whose claim to fame was seven at one blow, and he was deemed to be a really fearsome warrior. But uh, in fact, he was talking about uh, swatting flies. Uh, those of you who are a certain age, and there's not many of you, uh, will remember that stuff. But uh, the point I want to make is that uh, the way we present this stuff with the trade program and the webinars every two weeks, it's really easy to pick this stuff up. Uh, all you have to do is want to do it, pay attention, uh, come to the webinars. If you miss the webinars, make sure you uh, follow through and uh, see the uh, videos that we post uh, straight after or soon after the webinars. Uh, and you'll pick this stuff up. Remember that what we're showing you at the Daniel Code website is simply basic training, and we're acutely aware that we present it in a form that it's easy for you to make money because um, the uh, it sounds banal, I know, but uh, the purpose of, uh, of our business is for you to learn how to make money from markets. Um, and if you don't uh, make money and enough money to keep you keen and interested, uh, you'll drop out the system. So uh, that's what we do. And you can see here's a great first uh, first for the webinar shift. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You can see here's a great example of a guy who uh, didn't know very much about trading, if anything, and he's uh, picked it up and uh, doing very well. Um, uh, I don't actually even know what Brian's trading, but I know we had a ton of great Forex trades. Uh, on Friday, and I wanted to just run a, through a few of them for you. We haven't been placing enough emphasis lately on uh, uh, Forex. We've been pretty much focused on futures, but um, we do have a lot of clients who trade Forex, and it's uh, handled properly. It's uh, very profitable, uh, and one of the good things about it is you can trade Forex with a much smaller account. Uh, the mini Forex contracts, uh, the risk on them it, 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 and the requirement for uh, they don't have margin, but they do require you to have a minimum deposit before you can trade. Uh, it's quite minimal, so uh, we do have uh, a very active Forex trading group, um, and uh, we haven't uh, given it enough attention. So I just want to show you a few of the trades from Friday. Um, uh, really, you know, if you follow this stuff, you don't need to be frightened of it. Um, it's very, very rare that we're on the wrong side. Um, and even uh, in a situation like this, uh, where you get a buy signal um, and then uh, it's immediately reversed, you're still going to make a good lot of money. If you took that buy signal and didn't exit at the first profitable close, which was up here, uh, then uh, you got the sell the next day. Uh, and that didn't give you a first profitable close, so you stayed till at least um, the next day, which of course is yesterday. Um, and that uh, gave you a nice earn. Here's CAD Chief. Um, this is the Canadian dollar. CHF is the code. We call it Chief. It's actually the code for the Swiss franc. Um, and this is that pair, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. Uh, and you can see that uh, we had uh, the TO3 buy um, on Friday, which was just um, a boomer. Um, and one of the things to observe here, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways uh, to handle your exit here. We had a very outside bar. This is the biggest bar on the chart uh, for a very long time. When you get those really big gift bars like that, it is wise to exit uh, at the close of the market that day because probabilities are that that market is going to consolidate uh, for a period of time before um, it goes on. So when you get a gift like that, uh, just say thank you um, and uh, bank it. Um, our next chart is uh, Euro Australian dollar. Uh, same thing. There's Friday's plus sell, absolutely massive. Uh, the biggest, the biggest uh, bar on the chart by a mile. Um, and you say uh, thank you uh, and bank it. Uh, you'll see the stochastics down here haven't given you any support for your stop, uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that uh, probably with the next chart. And here it is. Um, this is Euro GBP. These are just some of the trades from last week. It was just a fabulous, fabulous week of trading. Um, and this was a, a TO3 and blue line sell signal. And you know, 
with the blue line sell signals, I encourage you to hold the trade uh, and then to, I'll just get my spotlight here, you'll be able to see it a little bit clearer. Um, here we are. Um, there was your entry. You were short uh, right there to, to five ticks. Uh, we use a five tick buffer uh, in Forex, two tick buffer in futures. Uh, you were short right in here. Um, and then uh, being a blue line trade, I really encourage you to hold these trades um, and to use the trailing stop. Um, and how the trailing stop works, it works off this stochastic down here. This is a 533 stochastic. Uh, and in fact, it's a special stochastic. It's a Daniel Code stochastic, the trade navigator, uh, made just for us. Uh, and it has the uh, different quality about it to most stochastics. This one particularly, um, it deals with inside bars in a different manner uh, and tends to be more accurate. But our simple procedure here um, is that you use a two-bar trailing stop. Uh, that is, you'll have your stop above the highest high of the last two bars that have completed, don't do this on an intraday basis, um, until the stochastic gets oversold, which happens right down here. Uh, and when that happens, you go to a one bar trailing stop. Uh, so you've got your entry here, you have this big bar down. By the time this next little reversal bar here was completed, you can see that the uh, blue line of the stochastic, the faster parts called percent K uh, of the stochastic had got oversold. So you went to a one bar stop uh, and you were stopped out just above that uh, point there, which was a nice, simple and easy trade. Um, here's one where the stochastic has not helped you, uh, but we have this very, very big bar on our TO3 sell on Friday. Uh, and uh, I've told you this before, when you get a really big bar like that, uh, that's well outside the, the, it's the largest bar on the chart in recent times, it's wise to say thank you and just take the money. Um, here's uh, the next chart, GBP Chief. Um, this again is a blue line trade. Again, I encourage you to hold these trades. Uh, here's your stochastic turning. This market's oversold down here. You've got a ton of divergence um, on your uh, uh, CCI, which is our proprietary momentum indicator. Uh, if you don't have this stuff, folks, for goodness sakes, get hold of Terry um, and he will switch on uh, these uh, studies and indicators for you. They're called uh, the Daniel Code Library um, and they live inside Trade Navigator and they're free to all members. So uh, once you uh, have got your membership set up, do contact Terry. Make sure he will uh, switches on the Daniel Code Library for you um, and you'll get these special DC stochastics and our uh, momentum indicators and our uh, um, a lot more, the proprietary uh, retracements, etc. So this market was really oversold. There was the buy signal right there. It's a blue line buy. So I'm encouraging you to hold on to that and follow the stochastic. Stochastic moves up, stochastic moves up. You get you could have got out profitable close there, but you get a lot of money if you held for the next day. By the time this bar here uh, is completed, you can see that the stochastic um, is now either overbought or very close to overbought, close enough for me. I think it is overbought. Uh, so you go to a one bar trailing stop, which means your stop loss um, is five ticks below uh, the last bar that was completed, and that's that uh, bar right there that I'm showing you. Okay, so they're the two different ways of handling these uh, these uh, trades, extraordinary big trades, uh, and the blue lines. Um, this is the um, AP, this is the Australian SPY 200. Uh, which is the futures contract that uh, tracks the All Ordinaries Index, which is the Australian equivalent of the S&P, if you like. Uh, it's the 200 largest companies uh, listed on the stock exchange in Australia. Um, and I just want to show you some really simple trading here. Uh, this is all a bit bunched up and confused, and that's because this trade navigator tool that shows you the dollars uh, is not capable of being moved. Once you put it on, it just stays there. Um, and uh, that sort of bunched up the chart uh, in ways that you wouldn't normally like. So uh, this isn't a particularly good trade. It's just a nice trade, um, and you can see that the market had run up here, um, and we had a TO3 sell signal right there. A normal TO3 sell signal, you'd exit first profitable close, uh, but if you used a bit more intellect than that, have a look down here, uh, you would see right there that the stochastic had hit the overbought line. 
uh, and that means there's a very high probability at this stage with a valid TO3 signal being elected of it going down uh, to the uh, bottom of the stochastic. So if you did hold it, uh, you got another day and a half out of it um, and then you got a buy signal, there was a TO3 buy signal in this bar. It's a bit hard to see but that turned around and gave you an outside bar uh, and this is on your day of entry at the point at which it traded below the previous bar having first made a high. You had to be short and our rule with outside bars is you must, must, must take the stop and reverse. Uh, so at that stage you would be short. Um, and uh, if you were, uh, you could have uh, exited first profitable close, you got a few dollars back here, not much, uh, but if you decide to hold this trade, uh, you got another three days down and then straight into our blue line buy signal, uh, which got you long just in here and closed out the short trade, um, and basically that trade had the potential to make you $2,200 uh, in about 10 trading days. So um, this stuff works on all markets all of the time. One of the problems that we have with the Australian market uh, is daylight saving. So for half the year it's fine, uh, but what happens when uh, Sydney goes on to daylight saving and puts their clocks forward and the US goes off daylight saving uh, and puts their clocks back is that by the time we get the end of day download uh, from Trade Navigator uh, and we then post the signals, which is one hour, uh, after the end of day download, uh, the Sydney Stock Exchange is already open, which means the futures market is already trading. Um, and there's absolutely nothing we can do about that, folks, but uh, it's, uh, not, uh, it's not great for six months of the year, uh, four months of the year I think it is, but the point is that nearly all these signals that we create, blue line signals, buy signals, TO3 signals, um, and to some extent the daily signals are valid for more than one day. Uh, so very often you'll get um, a TO3 or a blue line signal. Uh, this one, in fact, um, here where this signal was actually created three days before it was elected. Um, and this one, a TO3 there, it was created um, uh, from this bar way back here. So that was, uh, they're valid for two days, including the day of creation. Uh, so the signal was created after this bar was finished. So there was your first day, the trade was not elected. Next day was an inside day, so you carry forward the trade. Uh, remember for you that, that are not aware that uh, these inside bars are not picked up automatically by um, our software and programs that create these signals. Uh, so unless I put them in manually, which I don't always do, um, you will not pick them up in the trade program. So if you have a valid TO3 signal or blue line signal, and you get an inside bar, you need to have written that signal down and be aware of it. Uh, and when you get an inside bar, the last operative signal is simply carried forward. So uh, these signals valid, the TO3 is valid for two days. There was day one. The inside bars are null. This is day two where it was elected. Okay, so we can uh, get rid of that. Um, and uh, we can now go back to... Uh, looking at uh, the important business of charts. Uh, right, so let's make a start. We've got a lot to uh, go through today. Um, what have we got today? We've got uh, equities. We want to look at there at a real balance point at the moment. Uh, we want to look at gold because uh, many of you are very interested in gold. Um, we're also going to look at oil. Um, we've had a couple of requests and... Um, uh, Tony uh, D uh, wanted to see some long-term charts. I think he might be interested um, in uh, oil. Uh, Kurt had a uh, question regarding the uh, S&P, uh, which I'm going to deal with now. And Terry, uh, Terry uh, is an Australian bloke, I think. I'm sure you are, Terry. Yes, you are. Uh, Terry Roberts, I'm going to. He asked me to do an analysis of the uh, chart for the Commonwealth Bank, which is Australia's biggest bank. And in some respects, it's a proxy for the Australian economy, but uh, I don't trade stocks, so I don't have the bit too slow for me. Uh, retirees and ancient people trade stocks. Uh, we trade futures, guys and gals, um, which is wonderful. Uh, but Terry, I'm going to spend some time analysing the Australian share price index SPY for you, uh, which hopefully will give you the same insights or better. So. Uh, let's start with um, uh, the S&P. Here we are. Um, 
and uh, I said to you that this market is at balance point uh, and this is the long term chart, this is the 24 day chart. Um, you see we got our correction that we uh, we forecast, we thought it might have been more than that but uh, we thought it would dive down at least to this first uh, uh, standard deviation on the downside of the market which uh, it did, didn't quite get there, pretty close, we had the buy signal anyway um, and now it's roared up and it's into the first of the two uh, fourth seal lines that have stopped its progress so far. Uh, if you go back here uh, and this uh, this bar I'm showing you now is uh, end of June the 30th um, and these bars are roughly a month long, they're 24 trading days, uh, there's normally 22 trading days in a month, uh, so there's one, two, three, four months have been held at exactly this uh, number and we're now into the fifth month um, which um, um, has it, that one's expired, there's actually a small tiny bar there uh, that you can't see uh, that's just broken through that red line uh, but uh, that uh, has until the 17th of December to run so uh, we don't quite know what that's going to do yet but um, we did have a 59 signal there, uh, time cycle um, means, means nothing on its own uh, but it would be interesting to see uh, what happens if this uh, market bites one of these uh, fourth or fifth seal lines. Um, but at the moment the trend is up um, and uh, let's move on to the next chart. Uh, we'll now go to the 12 day chart, this is it here. Um, you should be able to see it shortly, it hasn't, um, uh, it hasn't quite changed for you folks yet, let's have a look, it has now. Um, and this is the 12 day chart which arguably has been the best chart uh, on, uh, of our group. Um, and you see the same thing here, we got our correction when we said we would, uh, we went down to the median that uh, went from uh, the uh, fourth, uh, fourth seal, the cocked hat there that I wrote about a few months ago, uh, we got our correction and now it's roaring up again, it's overcome the first two of these red lines that's now at its last level of resistance on the fourth seals. Um, and uh, Kurt asked what is that number at 2100? Um, it's actually 2120 but I've just been using 2100 for shorthand Kurt um, and what that is is I said uh, maybe eight, nine months ago uh, that if this market continued to follow its Daniel Code trading channel uh, and the trend remained up it would be at 2100 or thereabouts by Christmas um, and that looks um, about right. Uh, so there's the number, it's actually uh, going to be at 2120 um, by December the 17th and <coughs> that's just a forecast comment that if the market uh, did exactly what it's done that is where we would expect it to be by Christmas. Now that's all it is, that doesn't mean there's going to be a, a reversal there uh, or there's going to be a catastrophe there, it was just a stepping stone uh, eight or nine even longer perhaps months ago that I set out for you um, and uh, once uh, we achieve that we'll have new targets um, and uh, we'll be able to let you know where this market's going to go next year. Um, but in the meantime, uh, it's uh, bounced off the median, it's through its top one standard deviation, it's battling with its fourth seal line um, and its next target is this dotted line up here uh, which is the, uh, it's actually two standard deviations from the mean which is about as high as this market uh, goes uh, ever without a correction and that is up around that 2100 um, area. And let's now move to our six day chart, you know we go from the long period and we start with our longest chart and move down from there uh, and on the six day chart you're seeing exactly the same thing on a slightly different time frame. Uh, we had our correction uh, and the market is now the first thing it will try to do after the correction, it will try to regain the median uh, and the median on this chart is this heavier blue line. So these Daniel Code trading channels are a way of looking at price um, other than linear with our normal uh, support and resistance lines, our blue line targets uh, and our red and black line retracements, uh, they're just working off um, two dimensions. Uh, the the uh, dimension that runs along the bottom of the chart of course is time and the one that runs up and down is price. Uh, when you look at these Daniel Code trading channel charts, uh, you're also looking at time and price combined as it moves through. So 
um, at any point that we have the market at the median, uh, we can say the market is in balance um, and you can see that uh, pretty well continuously um, since way back when this particular piece of the chart started, uh, which was August 2011, uh, this market has just worked its way um, up and down uh, through the um, uh, through the uh, median. We could now put another uh, channel on here. Uh, that's we've got one channel on at the moment. We can make that two channels, um, and you can see here's the second channel along the bottom. So one, two, uh, three times now we've had. Uh, the market dive down to the second standard deviation of the mean. Uh, that makes this uh, look probably not quite right. Uh, I could fiddle with this a bit. That's a better. That's a better fit because we want to hold this low here at two standard deviations from the mean because we we knew that's where it was. Doesn't change anything here. The market's just back at or slightly above uh, the mean, uh, and uh, by definition. Um, when we have a move to two standard deviations on the downside, uh, our default assumption is that eventually this market will get to two standard deviations on the upside. Um, and that's uh, part of Newton's law, uh, that any action has an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, and you'd be amazed just how often that does happen that way. Uh, so this is our balance point. Uh, we've got some resistance overhead here. Uh, but the 12-day chart, which shows it best, um, has us right at um, another Daniel Code red line. Um, and if it overcomes that, uh, we go up uh, to 2100 uh, or better. Um, and at that stage, we'll give you all new predictions for next year. Um, make sure you all uh, are in the groove for what's likely to happen. OK, let's move on. Uh, the next market uh, we wanted to have a look at uh, was DX. Um, uh, that uh, we had a quick look at last week. This is the 24-day chart. Uh, no great change there. This market is uh, moving up. Remember when we saw this in a much, much longer term, uh, which I'm consolidating for you now, you can see that essentially this market had a huge run down uh, from 2001 uh, to 2008. And since then, really, it's been consolidating. <coughs> and this is a <coughs> chart that shows very clearly um, how much uh, US currency has been devalued uh, by the government, uh, which is uh, uh, in the interest of major US exporters. And it's done for their benefit, not yours. Uh, and as a private person and a consumer, uh, it simply means you're uh, getting savaged. Um, but anyway, be that as it may, that's the reality. Uh, so this market continues to consolidate. It's got a bit of work to do to convince us this is anything other than consolidation, uh, but it's a decent size move and uh, certainly been very tradable. Um, and right here you have its uh, resistance that it's going to encounter uh, from the fourth seal on that time frame. Uh, we then move to the 12-day uh, chart. You'll notice that we use uh, dollar DX for this analysis. This is the index. Uh, as opposed to the futures. Um, and here we see uh, exactly the same thing. Uh, this market, pretty interestingly, here's this existing DC trading channel. When it broke through here, uh, it got down to three standard deviations from the mean. Uh, let me get my spotlight. It might make this easier for you to understand. Uh, so this, uh, I don't want that. That's uh, another tool. They give you lots of interesting stuff in this program. Uh, that's the one we want there. This darker line here is the median or the mean, uh, and that's the center point of the Daniel Code trading channel. And these lines are variously one standard deviation from the mean, two standard deviations from the mean, and three standard deviations from the mean. Uh, and it's very, very unusual to do what this market has done. Uh, this market has gone past the two standard deviations of the mean, uh, you can see it uh, got down here, had a reaction, one, two, three, four, five odd week, and it then broke the three standard deviations from the mean. Now, normally a close below two standard deviations from the mean means the party's over <coughs> and there's a confirmed change of trend. In this case, this market found support at three standard deviations from the mean, uh, and it's now done what all markets do. It's roared all the way back up here. Remember, this line it's at here 
is the median. And that's the first thing that markets try to do is regain the median. Uh, so right now, this market too is in perfect balance. Markets at the median of the Daniel Code trade channel are in balance. Uh, and it now has um, a Daniel Code full steel line uh, not far above where it is. So we'll see um, uh, how it's going to handle that. Uh, in fact, we've got a pretty good idea how it's going to handle that. And I'll come to that later. Uh, so let us then move uh, quickly uh, on to there was the 12. Let's have a look uh, what's happening on our six-day charts. Um, and uh, there we are with the DX. Uh, and this uh, makes it perhaps uh, even clearer. Um, here's the rally going on. It actually found support. We said it was very unusual. How did it find that support? And you don't see this very often. There's the first place it found it on the Daniel Code trading chart on the Daniel Code red line. And here's the next place it found it exactly on another Daniel Code um, fourth seal line. These things are absolutely dynamite. Um, if any of you want to come to a tutorial, I'll teach you how to do it so you can create them for yourselves. Right, so what have we seen there? The market's roared up. We talked about this uh, a fortnight ago. We said it's going to find support or resistance, rather, uh, at the four seal line, which it did. That stopped it. Uh, and then we moved on another six trading days. There was our next six trading days, expired November the 17th. Same thing, the red line stopped it. Um, and now we're into this current period, uh, which uh, expires um, today. Uh, and yes, the, uh, the the red line has stopped that move again. Uh, so we do have a 59 cycle expiring here. Uh, you can get much more detail on this stuff, folks, uh, by uh, having a look at the uh, fourth seal coverage, uh, which I'm going to uh, point out to you later. Uh, but there's perfect target. Uh, it's found it. It's battled with it for three weeks. Um, and now we have time expiring as well, which gives us a probability of a turn. If not, it faces uh, a sort of a half a cocked hat uh, a little bit further on up here um, if it gets there. So uh, remember, we don't uh, trade these forecasts. They're just to give you um, an idea of what the probabilities are. Uh, but um, uh, we trade the market and we trade the signals as they come. But that shows you a wonderful view of why this market got this incredible support right at three standard deviations from the mean. Absolutely precise, perfect, and it's doing the same thing up here now. Okay, so that's where we are with the DX guys. Um, next market I wanted to show you was oil. Um, pretty interesting what's happening in oil. Let's go to our longest term chart and see if we've got a oil chart in there. Um, and there we are now. Uh, I wanted to scrunch this up to show you a bit more about oil to give you a real perspective of what's happening because uh, because we don't uh, look at long-term charts often enough and we're very influenced by media and commentary, which of course is you know just uninformed journalists writing, trying to explain what has happened. Uh, I have no understanding at all of markets, but uh, you can see here that uh, this uh, idea that oil is having this great pullback um, is, is really not right. All that's happened is that uh, oil has retraced 50% of this major uh, swing here. I'll get my tool again for you. Um, so we have uh, this huge run up here uh, all the way from uh, you know the start of the 2000s, 2001. Um, hit a peak um, up here um, in... Uh, December 07, thereabouts, um, and then we had this big pullback. So 50% um, of this, uh, this this whole swing here is 74, and that's about where markets are now. Now, uh, you know, a 50% correction is just nothing. It's normal. That's what you expect markets to do all the time. However, what is happening here, uh, which is of more interest to me at least, uh, is that this market is setting up a series um, of stops. Um, and there's uh, one they've been taken out. Here's two. And the rest of the stops will be under this low here. You remember we saw the same sort of thing in gold. Uh, when gold started to correct, we had a series of these lows fairly close together uh, with the stops bunched and bunched. And you can see 
uh, as it took out the this this was the first place the stops were, which is why you got a decent sized bar. Then this low here, which is why we've got a current bar that's a decent size. Then we've got stops under this bar, which have been taken out, and the next place for the stops to be is down here, uh, which is going to be at uh, just under that low, uh, at about 67. Um, and the market can get down there; it's going to run, uh, and you could get a decent trade down here, uh, down to well, well below 66 anyway. Um, this uh, this uh, one standard deviation is down here at. Uh, 60, 61 thereabouts, you could get a really fast move out of oil. So that's worth watching there, folks. So that's our very long-term chart. Uh, let's see what our more medium stuff is showing us. Uh, here's the same picture. Um, and you can see that this is now, uh, we found the high on our fourth steel line pretty, pretty nicely. In fact, very nicely. But that was a fifth steel line, incidentally. Um, and it start to come down, and then it's now running within its uh, Daniel Code trading channel going down, uh, and it's broken down below two standard deviations. That held it in the last period. You can see it, it uh, made its low and closed right at two standard deviations. It's now broken through that, and it's found the red line, uh, which is the next level of support. Uh, it should bounce from here. Normally, that's what, what happens on the red lines. Uh, they can either... Um, find that support and then just track them down for a while uh, or they can break them and if they do uh, we're going to be down to 66 and looking for the stops underneath uh, this bar here which has its low uh, at $67.15. Um, so that was uh, the 12. Let's see if the 6 has anything to add. And we'll find that here. Um, and it doesn't. Uh, that's just simply showing us that uh, it's running down through the Daniel Code retracements. 74.19 is 50% uh, of the last major swing, uh, and that's a perfectly normal retracement uh, that actually keeps the uptrend intact. Uh, so we want to see uh, some break of that if we're going to see uh, much more action in oil. Odds are, probabilities are, we get a rally from here. We have support on the medium-term charts at the Daniel Code ratios. And we have uh, absolutely perfect acknowledgement of the fourth seal line. Uh, so that's the uh, probability switches to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a rally in oil. <coughs> okay, what else did I have for you? Uh, I wanted to talk to you. I think they were the uh, major markets. So, uh, uh, Tony, uh, the oil you were interested in, uh, Tony D, I've done that for you. Kurt, you want to know about the 2100. I've dealt with that. Uh, Terry uh, Roberts, yes, you want to look at uh, the Australian economy. Uh, let's go on to that. Uh, again, let's start with our very long-term chart um, to get a proper perspective. Uh, and this uh, market is the one we don't usually spend a lot of time on, but it's a very, very good trading market. Um, and this is the Australian SPI, uh, SPI, and it stands for Share Price Index. Uh, it used to be called the All Ordinaries Index, which is a pretty unimaginative name. Um, eventually, uh, the S&P took over the index. It's now called the S&P SPY 200, uh, and it's the Australian index uh, of the top uh, 200 uh, companies on the Australian Stock Exchange uh, in Sydney. And this is the futures chart. Okay, remember the futures chart is different uh, to the index. It's based on the index. There is a very, very high degree of correlation because the arbitrageurs uh, force that correlation. Uh, but this is the futures chart. Um, and uh, what's happened here? Well, uh, have a look. Here's this huge run up, 03, all the way up to the high in 07, crash, almost decent move down anyway, to where? March 09. Sound familiar? This thing apes the S&P uh, to a certain extent, but it hasn't aped it in the recovery, uh, and it's sitting around... Uh, the middle, uh, this is, here's its latest uh, Daniel Kerr trading channel. And let me get the spotlight. They, pity they don't put these on the same page. It would make life easier. Um, here's a median, this darker line up here. Uh, same thing here. This market has been tracking this up and down, up and down. This, uh, this uh, existing current Daniel Code trading channel started in April 2011, uh, and it's been trading above and below the median. 
uh, bounded by one standard deviation on the upside uh, and not quite two standard deviations on the downside. Here was our 59 cycle here. Uh, that's one of your trading tools. It's this uh, uh, little uh, picture over here beside where I put the spotlight. Uh, the spiky looking creature is Dan the Hedgehog, who's our mascot. Um, and that one looks like Dan's in jail. Dan behind bars uh, is actually uh, a, a tool that creates the Daniel Code time cycle just by clicking on the chart. Um, and we had our 59 cycle here, uh, which is our normal cycle for top. So we got our correction from there. So what happens now? Um, pretty interesting uh, what, what's happening with the Australian economy. You've got uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, the most expensive real estate in the world. I think it's officially the second most expensive. Um, uh, all journalists, of course, try to put a good spin on real estate because they, it's a huge, huge... Um, oh, Greg, yes, gold. I've missed that. Thank you, mate. I'll get back to that. Um, uh, it's a huge part of the um, income of all uh, publications advertising for real estate. Uh, but I think it's closer to 10 times real estate prices are close to 10 times uh, average earnings um, and this has largely been brought about by the um, birth of the two income family. Um, in my generation uh, wives didn't work uh, unless they had to uh, and you didn't have as a common thing a two income family. It used to be quite enough to have a one income family that's all changed uh, and with the uh, growth of uh, women in the workforce uh, some of whom are very, very talented and earn a lot of money. Um, the uh, financial capacity of families uh, to spend on homes has gone up exponentially um, and that's the main reason we've seen these incredible uh, rise in prices. But um, the Australian economy is, it has been wholly dependent on, on really two things. It used to be an agricultural economy. Uh, in the last decade it's been dependent on housing. Uh, and also iron ore exports. Those of you that don't know, uh, the biggest uh, iron ore uh, deposits in the world are in Western Australia. Uh, most of them come out of a company called uh, Hammersley, uh, where all that stuff was discovered by Lang Hancock uh, a couple of three to four decades ago. Uh, and Gina Reinhardt is his daughter, now the wealthiest woman in Australia, and she's parlayed a lot of this Hammersley stuff into joint ventures with uh, Rio Tinto and uh, uh, Rio and uh, BHP Billiton, uh, two of the biggest uh, iron ore companies in the world. The third one is Vale, uh, which is a Brazilian company. They're based in uh, West Australia, their mines are. Uh, and iron ore and uh, property uh, have been the driving forces of the Australian economy uh, in the last decade. And we're going to move on uh, to have a look at the Australian uh, dollar, uh, which we'll tell you more about. Uh, what's happening in this economy than uh, anything else, uh, Terry? Um, let's see if we have anything on the uh, uh, on the 12-day uh, period for uh, the Aussie spy. AP. Uh, same thing. Uh, nothing terribly exciting there. It's just wandering up its uh, long-term uh, trading channel, um, and. Awful lot of interest in markets in Australia. The uh, uh, compulsory superannuation has made uh, uh, most Australians very much more aware of the stock market performance than they have been previously. <coughs> I think uh, they're all overvalued. Um, it's time uh, the stock market here had a decent correction, uh, but we'll see that come in due course, uh, and it will be largely caused by the Australian dollar. Don't forget, um, uh, almost 50% of Australian equities are owned by uh, US firms, um, hedge funds, etc. Um, and they're not only looking at actual performance on the share market, uh, they're looking at their risk on the uh, carry trade. Uh, so movements between the Aussie dollar, the US dollar, and also um, uh, US uh, Japanese yen, um, that's another consideration for them. So uh, I expect that we're going to see tremendous volatility in some of these tree, tree current, uh, uh, currencies. Um, and, and there has been volatility already, but I think we're going to see an awful lot more. I think there are going to be some exciting times in uh, Forex trading. Um, so Terry, um, I'm going to come back to you. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what the market's showing. As you can see here, that uh, here's our fourth seal line. This, this upper one uh, caught this turn. 
Uh, the market then uh, ignored this lower fourth seal line the first time and chose instead one standard deviation from the mean. You should have these Daniel Code trading channels on your charts because markets use them all the time. Um, then it's come back, it waffled around here and it's run this whole period uh, from February uh, 2014 right through uh, until September 2014 against the Daniel Code fourth seal line. That's how powerful these things are. Um, and it's had, I don't know, is it five, six, seven attempts to break through, uh, been unable to and eventually uh, that's what's turned it down. Um, so Terry, I'm going to come back and look at the Australian dollar, uh, which I think is going to tell us a lot more um, than the index is telling us about what's going to happen in Australia. Uh, but Greg has kindly reminded me uh, to get on and uh, uh, bring everyone up to date on what gold is doing. We have a lot of uh, people interested in gold here uh, as our members. So let's uh, start again as we always do on the long-term chart. Uh, worth always remembering this stuff to see just actually where gold is. So as you can see, it's still maintaining a very, very high level. Uh, nothing dramatic here. This is uh, really high level stuff and all it's doing so far is uh, attempting to correct this last swing. Um, and this uh, uh, 1147 um, has held this last move and turned it. Uh, I don't think that's, uh, that, that's uh, necessarily going to be the final low. You can learn a lot more about this from the fourth seal uh, at our website. Guys, any of you that are interested in, in gold uh, or indeed the S&P or any of these other markets, but particularly gold and the S&P, you should be subscribed to the fourth seal because uh, that is updated every week. Uh, so you get a much more current view of it than I give you of these webinars and a more detailed view. Um, and the other thing is that people not always understand that the fourth seal are not just turning points. What they do is they create trends. Uh, when markets are turned at these fourth seal lines, a trend ensues. Uh, and in earlier webinars, I've shown you that if you bias your trades in the direction of the fourth seal trend, uh, that is have a bit more on the trades that are going with that fourth seal trend and a little less on the trades that are against it, you will at least double the size of your equity curve. Um, and I've done a webinar specifically on that. Some of you will remember it's absolutely amazing. Uh, so if you know you want to up your earnings, that's the simplest way. Get on and subscribe to the fourth seal for your particular markets that you're interested in and bias your trading in the direction of the trend the fourth seal is creating. So Greg, uh, here was our 62, remember, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, 62 is, tends to be support in these charts. Um, and uh, let's move on to our uh, 12 period here. Uh, and here's gold uh, on our 12 day chart. Uh, and it's been happily running down uh, this Daniel Code trend line, broke through it there, got support off the fourth seal line, rallied back to the median, down to one standard deviation from the mean got back to the median, tried to go higher, couldn't, came down, got support from the median again, tried to go higher, couldn't, and it's back now at the median. Uh, and it's trying desperately to hold that. Uh, we had a 62 time cycle expire and our full seal target. It broke through it a bit, but it reversed almost instantaneously. Uh, and that is certainly support. Whether that's the final low or not for this great big correction, you need to go to the uh, fourth seal uh, heading under our website um, uh, to get some more information on that. Uh, let's have a look at our six day chart, which is really uh, tells us most about uh, gold at the moment. Uh, and uh, last week uh, we talked about, uh, 10 days ago I should say, uh, we talked about, spread this out, it's got a bit of a jumble, isn't it? Um, Uh, we talked about the fact we had a 44 cycle, we had a 62 our traditional support cycle and this market which had been, I mean, you know, people think markets are random, just simply don't understand anything about trading. Look at it, it came down from a four steel line, found support, rallied, broke to the next four steel line, went back, found the same four steel line uh, as resistance, dived all the way down, found support at the four steel line, 
two bars up, down, closed just above the fourth steel line, and then it broke. Where did it break to? The next fourth steel line, which you've been on these charts for, I don't know, months. Uh, you've seen me talking about this. Uh, and we had a 44 cycle and a 62 cycle expiring. Uh, and what we say is that when uh, time and price are squared, that means we have a recognizable uh, price level from the Daniel Code numbers, which is in there, and we have a recognizable time cycle from the Daniel Code sequence, which is these two. We say that time and price are squared, and when time and price are squared, a turn is almost inevitable. Uh, so we got the turn, um, and now we're getting the rally. Uh, the question is what and where to? Well, there's strong evidence suggests that's an important low, uh, but it may not be the final low for this uh, long consolidation. Um, and you need to go to the Four Seal uh, page at the website to get more detailed information on that. Uh, right now we're in a rally. Uh, to have anything meaningful happen, uh, it's got to take out that high uh, that I just showed you, uh, which is up here at um, 12.55 um, and a bit. Uh, so that's uh, its first meaningful target because that's where all the stops are uh, on the short sellers. Uh, and this market's going up, it's got to get itself into that zone uh, and start pulling out those stops. So trend's still up in gold at the moment. Uh, nice big rally for um, a week and then uh, not so strong at the moment. Uh, but we've uh, got some overhead resistance on the daily charts there, which uh, uh, you look at the daily charts, you'll see that. Okay, uh, Greg, that's right. Now I want to show you these... Uh, trades that I think are important uh, to come up. They're Forex trades. Um, the first one um, is the Aussie USD. Um, <coughs> and what has happened here, you have to bear with me folks, we're going to go over time a bit today but I, I, I won't keep you but it's important you understand this stuff. Um, <coughs> this uh, market here, this is the Aussie USD and you can see it's had this uh, massive run up from 2008 um, into 2011, um, at which stage uh, the Aussie dollar is worth 8% more than the US dollar, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and this was all fueled by this uh, huge mining boom with these uh, world class, world leading, I should say, iron ore deposits uh, and liquefied gas and all sorts of other minerals, uh, predominantly in West Australia and North Queensland being discovered and developed um, and the cost of bringing these mines online is absolutely massive. Uh, I think uh, Gina Reinhardt's Roy Hill uh, mine which is uh, progressively getting to production now, I think it was something like a, uh, look I'm guessing, but the, the, the many, many billion, billions, the, the cost of bringing these lines, developing them and coming on stream is just absolutely massive. And that created this huge demand for US dollars because of course most of this equipment is either coming from the US or is priced in US dollars. Um, and that's what this whole shaded uh, thing about. This is the run up in the development phase, uh, the huge cost extending phase of bringing these uh, mines online. Um, and that's finished now. They've gone pretty much into the uh, uh, production stage, uh, which means less staff, less capital expenditure, uh, and very interestingly, uh, some problems. Um, at this stage up here, iron ore, which is the main um, export in the uh, Australian minerals uh, lexicon, um, iron ore uh, was at $130 um, a tonne, uh, and it's fallen almost 50%. Uh, it's just broken, it just broke uh, $70, it was 130 plus, uh, and it's just broken through $70. So it's pulled back about 50%, Australia's major uh, dollar earning export. Um, part of that is uh, due to a slight slowdown in China. The other part of it is a deliberate policy by the three majors, Vale, Rio Tinto and BHP, to flood the market with uh, surplus production. Uh, in the hope of uh, rolling out some of the uh, more junior, uh, newer uh, mining companies, which they've done successfully uh, with quite a few so far. But I suggest to you 
their real target is to get rid of Fortescue um, that has a uh, break-even cost of about uh, perhaps 74 to 78 dollars this stuff's pretty confidential uh, whereas BHP and Vale uh, BHP and uh, Rio I should say uh, have a break-even cost in the mid 40s uh, so I think that's their real target uh, so this will go on for a while um, so uh, we've seen the uh, Australian dollar come down a bit not much Terry that's a 50 percent retracement uh, of this major move up and that's just a normal everyday retracement markets retrace 50 percent all the time, all the time. Um, and that actually keeps the trend up from a technical point of view. And I don't believe that's the case. So we're going to see uh, a much lower uh, Aussie dollar over time. Uh, at the very least, it should get down uh, and start tracking or breaking uh, through this bottom one standard deviation. Um, and I think on this chart, uh, we're going to see 80. Uh, and as I show you the next chart, you'll see there's a good argument uh, to suggest that we're going to see lower than that uh, and it should be lower I mean this is a um, completely phony uh, currency value um, apart from uh, minerals and uh, uh, extractive industries there's really not much now that Australia does very well it's a big cattle producer agricultural producer uh, <coughs> but on a global scale nothing uh, Australia is often described as a big uh, producer of grains uh, one state um, in in, the, in America, I mean, um, Ohio produces more uh, wheat than the whole of Australia, for goodness sakes. Uh, same thing, here's your 12-day chart. It's done a perfectly normal correction down to that 50% point, 85.40, and that's the key point here. Once it starts to break below that, uh, all the really long-term stops for those people who don't know how to trade uh, are under 80, 80.5 uh, 80 or thereabouts. Now, and I expect there's an opportunity there for a decent rundown uh, over time. Uh, let's have a look at the six. Um, and here's showing you the same thing. Here was the big run up. Uh, this is uh, Aussie. This is the right chart, yeah. Um, and it's now running straight down through its channel. The big trade that I expect, folks, is going to be the New Zealand USD. Uh, for those of you that are interested in um, forex markets, let's start with our big. Uh, trend here our big uh, market um, and this is the New Zealand dollar it's a very actively traded market uh, the New Zealand dollar much bigger than you'd think um, and this is very much the same story as I've told you on Australia but instead of being based on iron ore this is based around dairy um, and <coughs> excuse me dairy is a very uh, strange thing historically uh, it was a disorganized uh, grubby unsophisticated business uh, until the last couple of decades and the change in dairy frankly has been led by New Zealand uh, where two things have happened first of all um, the government uh, of the day <coughs> many years ago um, decided that um, I'm trying to remember the Prime Minister's name at the time um, I gave them some advice. They didn't even have a uh, uh, Consumer Protection Act over there, Fair Trading Act. I gave them some legal advice on it. Longy, David Longy. Uh, two things happened. First of all, uh, the government of the day decided they would completely exempt the dairy industry uh, from the uh, anti-competition uh, rules, which New Zealand adopted. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been done in a way that purports to maintain competition, but it's a farce. Uh, there is no real competition in that market, uh, and the government further on that policy um, allowed the incorporation of a company called Fonterra, uh, which is a farmers cooperative uh, that vertically integrated that uh, in dairy. It uh, um, handles the dairy industry uh, almost entirely. There are a few independents, just enough to give an appearance of some competition, but in fact Fonterra runs the show and uh, they're exempt from all of the uh, antitrust uh, regulations and law and um, they are completely um, uh, vertically integrated. They go from uh, uh, the, the farms, the milk to uh, the milk powder, the uh, Cassian, the, uh, all the various butter cheese, all the various parts and they've done a marvelous job being a monopoly supplier they've done a great job uh, of marketing uh, 
um, and dairy in New Zealand has become a very big, very sophisticated and very, very successful uh, business. Um, and uh, it's had huge support from government to allow it to breach all of the environmental uh, rules about uh, polluting waterways, etc. Uh, and it's also had massive support from government in research uh, and development and the output uh, from New Zealand dairy cows has gone up uh, astronomically in the last 50 years. Uh, in the last 20 years it's uh, you know gone up uh, to about 500 um, grams of milk solid per cow. It used to be around 220, 250. Absolutely extraordinary the, the, the advance that the technology and science has made. So 30% of New Zealand exports are dairy in one form or another and this is the most high profile, most solid and most visible uh, part of New Zealand's business. Uh, and it's also the one with the most flow through because of course the land prices that um, these dairy farms are uh, attracting are massive uh, of the of the air order of forty five thousand dollars per hectare or more. Uh, the dairy conversions where uh, investors and uh, dairying type people buy vast tracts of grazing agricultural land and convert it to uh, special purpose dairying farms. Uh, again, the, the the spend of bringing that online is massive, uh, and that's all money that goes uh, into the community uh, and into supplies of equipment and what have you. Now, what's happened here? Uh, these prices ran up in this huge same thing as Australia. Dairy prices ran up to about eight dollars forty, eight dollars fifty per kilo of milk solids, is how they express it. Um, and what's happened since then? is that dairy prices are now down almost 50% uh, and we would have expected to see that reflected in the price of the um, New Zealand currency, particularly the NZD USD cross and we haven't seen it um, and a 50% retracement which is again I'd say just is normal um, and that's where it gets you to is down around 63 cents. So. There is a massive, massive trade, I think, coming in the New Zealand short trade in the New Zealand dollar. Um, and that's the one I want you to uh, keep looking for um, and uh, watch to see a break. Same thing we had um, in uh, gold previously and now in Australia. Uh, the stops under that bar are taken out. Um, the next lot of stops are down at uh, 74.50 odd. Uh, and then there's almost a perfect picture of the last chart we looked at. Um, are under here at 73.60 odd and then this is the biggie here if this breaks um, at 71.14 uh, you're going to see a fast move down to 63 be some great trading opportunities okay so that's it folks we've uh, done an hour and five minutes um, you've all been uh, very good very quiet uh, nobody's asking any questions um, so that's going to be about it for the uh, uh, for the webinar. I'm so glad you were able to join us for this uh, pre-Thanksgiving. I just wanted to make sure you're all in tune and understood what we're looking forward to. Uh, do enjoy your break uh, and uh, put the feet up. Enjoy your families. Enjoy all that wonderful food you're going to eat. Uh, and uh, we'll be back with new trading signals uh, on Tuesday. There'll be no TO3 signals on Monday. <coughs> None tomorrow because futures markets are closed half day on Friday, don't forget, <coughs> excuse me, make sure those of you who are trading um, Genie, GMAG, etc., close out your trades uh, or make sure at the very least that your stops are good till cancelled uh, because normally they'll expire at the end of each session. Best to close everything out guys, then you haven't got to think about it, you can have a complete break from your trading, uh, enjoy your families, enjoy your food and drink, um, get a bit of rest uh, when we come back uh, Tuesday next week we'll have the run into Christmas uh, which I think might be uh, quite dramatic. Uh, certainly be a trader's market for us all the way um, and just as good as it has been. So thank you for your attendance. Um, Matt, MSN, use my friend, um, Tony uh, and B. Coleman. Thanks. Happy, happy Thanksgiving all from a lot of our clients. Thanks, David. All right, guys, enjoy your uh, holiday, um, and I will look forward to seeing you on our return. Bye-bye.